Shut up and sit down. Hi, I'm PJ Matavish and welcome back to another DCG tutorial. So in this one we're doing, as you see from the title, uh, question C4 from the 2017 paper. Uh, this question was a quest as you see here. So now I'm just going to read through it and kick into it. So the first part, part A, is a uh, CAMS question. So CAMS are used in engines of quad bikes, dual displacement diagram and profile of a radial plate clamp, clamp cam. Uh, which rotates in an anti-clockwise direction and imparts the following motion inline follower uh, of diameter oh roller follower of diameter 18 mil okay that's cool so 0 to 120 is uh, UAR 120 to 180 is uniform velocity UV and 180 to 360 is a fall of simple harmonic motion so the nearest approach to the roller center of the camshaft is 40 and the camshaft diameter is 20 so use a distance of 12 mil for each 30 minute interval. okay so it is now i tend to start off with with these questions i'll tend to start off with the um the camshaft the closest approach and then work off that for my displacement diagram so it is going in anti-clockwise direction so it's going anti-clockwise so it means that we go our labeling will go clockwise so i'm going to start over here on the left hand side and I'm going to put in the camshaft, the closest approach, and I'll put in the displacement diagram over here. Okay, so that's my initial setup. So we have the damper 20 camshaft here, the closest approach between the two centers. So it's very important, it was the two centers, not the actual closest approach between the roller itself, but the two centers was 40. So I measure up 40, put in my damper 18 roller, came along from the base of the roller, and I said use 12 mil for each interval, and we're doing a full uh, revolution. So we needed 12, and I could f finish off the height because it told us that there's a rise of 36 and a rise of 24. So now let's focus on the displacement target. So first things first, from 0 to 120, it was a rise of 36 with uniform acceleration and retardation. So UAR. So let's mark in the height first. So this section here is UAR. So it'll come from 0 up to uh, the 120 there, and it's UAR, uniform acceleration retardation. And what you have to do with UAR is you have to find the center line, uh, divide it into uh, 6, and then you bring the bottom tree down to the vertex here at zero and the top. You're basically doing uh, parabolic curves. Okay, but in this case, we well, can still do that and draw them down. But what we need to do is put in, uh, split up. So we only have two segments here, but we need to have three. So we need to divide up the base into three as well, divide height up into three. So the full length there is 24. So the full length there is 24. That's handy. They gave it to us so we can just put in uh, every eight mil. And then our middle line here is the 60. Now, normally you could draw a line out any angle here, divide up like a ratio or divide up into equal parts. But it's 36, we need six parts, so that's handy enough. The center one will give you a point. Goes around the center line. The top two get drawn up to the end, which is at the top of the 120. And the bottom two get drawn back to the zero. Now with the first line that we did there, that eight mil meets the first line here, that's a point. And second meets the second, then you have the third, then you have fourth and fifth. Now we're not gonna we'll draw it nice and lightly first. So this is our uniform acceleration and retardation. But what's important to remember is we are just using the 12 mil segments to draw points down for the roller. So 
follow your path and where it cuts the 90 so follow the power cuts the 90 here that's a point on your uh on your cam for your for your cam follow it down that's another point 60. follow it down here that's another point on the 30 and then you're back at zero so you need to have three points here even though it's only two but for the cam you're only using the 30 the 60 and the 90. next is head of rise of one uh, of 24 which we already have thanks to the full height of the 60 and it was over to 180 and it was uh, uniform velocity so up to the top of the 180 up to here uniform velocity just means a straight line that could be a strange looking cam so that's the point in the 120 that's the point in the 150 this is the point in the 180 and lastly then it's had a fall of 160 sorry a fall of 60 back down here to the bottom of 360 of simple harmonic motion now we have one two three four five six segments there simple harmonic motion you're going to divide up the height uh to you divide the height to the radius of a semicircle divide up the semicircle to 60 and bring the corresponding points to corresponding lines that's how you do simple harmonic motion so the height is 60 so the radius is 30. so divide up that divide the semicircle of 30 60 and you'll find points and bring those across So that's your displacement diagram. Simple amount of motion is just driving the height in, into a uh, semicircle, find the radius of the semicircle, divide up 360 and bring those points across. Same thing goes for this as your UIR at the start. If there isn't the right amount of segments, you have to draw it anyways, find the segments, divide up and get the segments, and you only use the ones that we're going to bring across here for the rotor. So that can go in strong now. Okay, so now that the displacement diagram is finished, we need to bring those blue points over here to the center line, rotate them down to the corresponding uh, segment here in the around the camshaft, and then draw it in. Now, first thing I'm going to do is divide up the camshaft 360, get a range of lines that I can mark my heights on. Now, remember, it was rotating anti clockwise, so the first line of the cam that your follower is going to meet is on the right hand side so we are going to be bringing these points down clockwise now i'm going to mark in one and i might fast forward through the rest because this section is straightforward it's all the same so we'll save the first height here for 30. i'm going to project that over to my center line and that's basically showing you the height that the roller would have moved up to okay but it's not here it's on the 30 there so i need to put pin the compass at the center of the camshaft lead at that height and rotate it down to the 30 line, to the 30 degrees line. So that will give you the base of the roller. Now what's important to remember is the roller is diameter nine. So we need to, or sorry, radius nine, diameter 18. So we need to mark the center above that and actually draw a portion of it in because the roller, the cam is going to be tangential to the roller. So what you need to do is actually draw your cam tangential now to that arc, not to the point. You're going tangential to the arc. So it's very important that you mark in the base of it, find the center, and then draw in an arc again. Draw in the actual rotor, and then your cam will be tangential to the base of all the rotors. Okay, so that's the same with all of them. Next one, 60, we'll bring it across, down, so on. So I'm going to fast forward through this section now. Okay, so I made a little mistake there. So remember that the heights you are marking are the bottom of the roller. So they're the bottom of the roller. So from those points, you must mark up the radius of the roller. So to find the center. And then you draw 
portion of the arc, portion of the roller. And now what we're going to do is put in freehand a tangential curve to the base of all those rollers and then you can draw it in strong. That's your part A finished now. That is the cam displacement diamond and the cam uh, plate cam profile done. So that's the plate cam profile done. Now, as you can see, it might be easier to see. You see this one here. Uh, might be okay to see. Might not have to zoom in. And we're not necessarily hitting all those blue points, all those heights. You're just going tangential to the roller itself. So it's not actually hitting the base of the roller. It's actually hitting the edge of it there. Same thing with uh, this point here. It's hitting the bottom here of the roller, but not the actual base point there or the height that the center has moved to so that's important to remember the roller the inline follower you're just going to the points all right if it's inline knife edge follower it's just going to the point like that and you just mark all the points connect all the points in this case you're just going to the uh you must put in the roller itself okay so that is c4 part a done as always with these tutorials i hope they help and remember to leave a like if it did help and um it gives me feedback as to whether they are useful or not and also don't forget to subscribe so you know when i'm uploading uh, more of these tutorials so best of luck in your exams and as always we'll see you in the next one